in a world like none other. There comes one man in search of plastic, in search of cons. He is known as Plasticon. Join him as he brings toys from another dimension to a household near you. Now you can fight mighty battles with Triaxe and the Virox army! Recently, the minor battle skirmishes between these two countries erupted in full-scale war. Hundreds of land and air combat vehicles battled across the land. With their huge fighting machines, they staged the most massive battles ever! The largest armies in the world are in your hand. Take command! Megaforce, brought to you by Gear. Subassembly required. Vehicles separately. Welcome back to another Plasticon review. Today we're going to cover some Kenner Megaforce stuff. Yeah, we're just continuing on with that line. And we're going to take a close look at the largest vehicle out of the v rocks It's called the Thor Hammer. This thing is massive. It is a large rocket launching base. It almost looks like an aircraft carrier in a way the entire command center and everything's way back here at the very back just like an aircraft carrier this thing is insanely detailed there's so much going on with this particular toy this toy is loaded with gimmicks it's got a lot of gimmicks going on with it the color scheme is really interesting I like how they have just went ahead and molded the very bottom portion of this entire thing and this uh, kind of a darker chocolate color brown along with this uh, kind of an off-white almost a gray going on here up top not to mention it they just packed this thing full of detail throughout the entire thing they even brought some of that brown onto the top of the deck which I'll you'll be able to see a little better pictures of speaking of the uh, entire gimmick line of this thing. This thing has got a lot. So let's go ahead and cover the little bitty diecast tank it comes with first and then we'll continue on with the large enchilada here. Thor Hammer comes with this little bitty teeny tiny tank. This is primarily one of the little battle tanks to then we'll get in the battle packs. Um, he is identical to the original release. It's got the the three pack. It's just identical, just sculpting wise. But color wise, there is a major difference going on here. I like how they have picked out the entire treads on this guy with like a really, really kind of like gunmetal color going throughout here. And then brought in a real decent desert camo color with this, uh, it's almost like an orangish brown. And then straight up tan for the turret. It does have the ability to go around 360 degrees, and these things are just packed with detail. If you guys have seen my other review of this thing, it's it's identical. It's the same tank. It's just a different color, which I really do like this color. It's very neat looking. He does happen to have the uh, V-Rox emblem right there on the side. No other paint tampos other than that, but honestly, I think that was enough paint tampoing on him. He didn't really need much more. But these things are really, really hefty die casts, if you haven't seen those. And it does have a little port on the bottom for the little square pegage that these guys can plug into. Very neat that it actually comes with a small tank that doesn't look like anything else in the entire line. This guy is exclusively only comes with the floor hammer. So let's go back over to that big rocket launcher, shall we? Taking a closer look at the Thor hammer. This thing is just loaded with guns. This thing is literally a battleship that drives around on the ground. It has got so many turrets all over it. Every turret has ability primarily to do 360 degrees, but some of them are limited to its placement actually on the toy. Um, the ones that are really apparent that can do 360 are the ones out here that's on this uh, primarily a loading ramp. And then it's got the uh, one here that's right next to the tower that almost 
do a 360, but you know, if you're shooting that direction, you end up shooting into the uh, tower, which you don't want to do that because you know that, that can that can cause bad things to happen. It's got quite a few here on the front. These uh, front implement cannons can only move so far, but it's really neat that there's this many on the front of the entire vehicle. I do like the idea that they do have things that are kind of asymmetrical here. Nothing is, you know, there's no symmetrical portion to this toy. This toy is completely asymmetrical, and I love that about it. It really does look unique. It's very cool with the color that they've just picked out throughout this entire thing. I just like the idea that the turns all of them are silver. It's neat to see something like that kind of pick out. Um, even on this launching mechanism here you actually have a turret that moves up and down which is kind of nice. What else is really cool is how many wheels this thing has. It's just it's loaded with wheels all the way throughout it and they didn't even leave out the little bitty guns that are actually down next to the wheels. They put in a couple extra turrets underneath where they really didn't necessarily have to do but they did. They added these in. It would have been neat to see these things move up and down but honestly parts count and toys throughout the years, those are probably what have easily gotten lost because of how small they are. I mean, they're primarily at the size of like maybe like a needle or so. So I wonder if they don't like poke you, but they're not. They're, they won't hurt you. They're not like a rubberized plastic, but they are kind of a plastic kind of, you bend it too many times it will snap, but they are really, really durable. It's very neat. I do like the uh, large rocket launching mechanism this thing has. It's got a very, very cool tower. This tower has ability to uh, lift into three positions and the three positions is primarily or how far you want to fire off the, uh, the rockets themselves. To do the entire activation of the uh, launching mechanism, you'll primarily just move this lever up. And when you do, like I said, it goes to three different detents, which is kind of neat. And then to actually fire the rockets, you have a little bitty button on the side, but that's after you primarily push your rockets all the way in, they will fire away. Mine's a little temperamental. Sometimes it will fire when I push the rocket in, almost immediately try to fire it out of my hands, and then sometimes I have to jiggle it just to get it to do it. This is pretty much going to be your mileage varying on that considering, you know, these mechanisms can kind of wear out over throughout the years. But it also depends on the uh, care and everything of the missiles. Um, this missile here has kind of had its share. It looks like, you know, I, I didn't buy this from brand new, but it looks like it had its share with maybe you know, somebody put it in its mouth, maybe a dog got hold of it a little bit here. It's a little crumpled here, but I mean, honestly, it still fits in here just fine, and it actually fires just no problem whatsoever. So I really haven't had much of an issue. And these things are actually a pretty durable kind of plastic. They're very rigid. They do fire pretty good. Um, they don't, they're not going to fire completely across the room, but they do have a little bit of range. The other thing I really like is this uh, little glider that it comes with. This, it's jet primarily. I mean, it's like a little bomber jet. And this is something that you really didn't even need to include, but I like the idea that they did. It gives you a bit of variety when it comes to firing off things off this thing instead of a large rocket. It does have ability to just stow right here within the tower mechanism, which is kind of nice that you actually have a place to dock the uh, glider bomber or whatever you guys want to really want to call this thing. Now the other thing that's this thing really, the only disappointment I would say is the entire missile itself does not come off. It's actually attached throughout the back. If you were one of those crafty kind of people, I'm sure you guys can probably go through and, you know, unpick this thing and pull the, the uh, entire missile off. But to be honest, I really wouldn't do that. It would kind of ruin it because considering you can't really attach this missile any other way other than the mechanism it actually has, unless you're crafty and decide to do some modding magnets or something. Although, some of you guys out there I know could do that kind of thing. Another cool, really, really, really interesting gimmick I like, this, like about this thing is this entire loading mechanism that I was talking about earlier. This loading mechanism has ability to just 
drop tanks primarily right off into a battlefield. And what's neat about this entire mechanism is the fact that you can actually store two more tanks within the storage area so that way they can just drive right on out and allowing you to send your entire squad out with no problems whatsoever. It's very neat. I like this gimmick. This is a gimmick that I just I wish they saw more of this in toys nowadays. I like the idea of just elevator gimmicks. This was primarily a, a thing that they had throughout the 80s and 90s. Just more toys had elevators back then. I mean, even in the 70s, quite a few of your Hot Wheel toys had them. But I do like the idea that they implemented an elevator gimmick in this thing that really wasn't even needed, but they did. Along with the weight of the uh, tanks, it actually they slide right off with no problem whatsoever. I tried this earlier, and the uh, this tank here, when I was actually firing, uh, dropping this entire elevator off, it caught this turret here on the side. Sometimes that might happen when you play with this thing, but it's really neat. I do like this. The other great thing I absolutely love about this toy is the fact that even when you have the entire tower raised completely up, it's got places to be able to put a helicopter or maybe a VTOL. If you really wanted to put a jet there, you could, but I do like the idea that it almost has like a landing platform, almost like an aircraft carrier. It's not quite big enough to become an aircraft carrier, but I do like the idea that it's just got enough detail and places that you can place things on this thing. My recommendations when it comes to getting one of these guys is things to look out for. Primarily, okay, make sure it's got all the wheels. These wheels are all single axle. They are actually one solid molded piece. And it's going kind of gives me a bit of an opportunity here to show you the bottom of this thing. How much detail they even put on the bottom of this toy that was not even really necessary. And uh, just, it's really neat to see that. And you know, it looks like they might have in the past probably had an idea of maybe either maybe making it motorized. I don't know. I like the idea that it has these little split pieces here in the axles, but I'm not sure if that might have been something they were looking at. Not to mention the wheels being split like this. Maybe they might have had an idea to put treads on these way back then, but I'm not absolutely sure when it comes to the, what the designing aspect of the engineering on this toy would have been. But it's really cool to see that kind of detail just thrown throughout the entire toy. And what's nuts about this, I mean, it's even got just diamond plating back here, like underneath. Like, this isn't really necessary. And they put it there. I just love the idea how much detail they literally packed into these. These things are amazing. The only thing that I can say about mine is mine actually has a problem with the elevator. The elevator itself is completely unpegged, as you can tell. But mine, the uh, little piece here that kind of cups over it is supposed to primarily just clip right in. Well, it has broken off on mine. But that doesn't mean that every one of them out there are going to suffer from that. This is probably because the kid that was playing with it all the time, you know, eventually it broke probably right? because he played with it so much. And that's okay because, you know, some people will be like, well, why don't you, you know, have a pristine one? Well, I like toys that have a little bit of age on them. I don't mind them being played with. Not to mention the stickers. The stickers on this thing, is, they're, they're all over it. And I know for a fact I'm probably missing some because actually when I first got this, I had a few that literally just fell off in the box. And I tried to apply them to put them back on, and they're a lot like those uh, G.I. Joe stickers. They are clear backed, and if you don't do it the correct way, they will look horrible. You will see hair and dirt and everything else in them. But it's really cool having the opportunity to be able to show you guys this piece. This, this thing is absolutely awesome. It is the largest vehicle that Virox ever produced. I do know there are a few out there that did not reach the production market, but I will get into going to, to a uh, video about that way later in the future. But this is a really, really, really awesome piece. If you guys are one of those ones that want to collect like your V-Rock armies and such, I mean, this thing is a very, very good piece to have. Especially when you have quite a few other vehicles to kind of put in here with it. I mean, it just kind of shows you how much of a scaled army you can have. Especially if you have this thing here as your centerpiece. It's primarily the flagship of the group. Anyhow, 
This has been Plasticon. This has been yet another awesome review of Mega Force. And I'll see you guys around because I have plenty more coming your guys' way. And that's it for now. Bye.